Om Kelo Panishad. Please chant. Hari Om. May my limbs, speech, prana, eye, ear, strength, and all my senses grow vigorous. All is Brahman, is the Brahman of the Parishes. May I never deny Brahman. May Brahman never spurn me. May there be no denial of Brahman. May there be no spurning by the Brahman. That all the virtues recited by the Upanishads repose on me, delighting on the Atman. May there be, may there, may they in me repose. Om peace, peace, peace. The indwelling power. Who is the director of the mind? Who impels the mind to alight on the objects? Brahma. At whose command does the prana proceed to function? The command of Brahma or the Absolute. At whose command do men utter speech? The command of Brahma. What intelligence direct the eyes and the ears towards their respective objects? The intelligence of Brahma. Behind the prana and the senses, there is Brahman or the Supreme Self. He who knows this attains immortality. Ignorant people identify themselves with the body, mind, prana and senses. An account of nishyans or avidya. They mistake these false, perishable, limiting adjuncts or vehicles for the pure, immortal Atman and so they are caught in the round of births and deaths. But some wise people abandon this false identification, separate themselves from these limited adjuncts to inquiry, this termination, unvaya vitareka yukti and practice of deity deity doctrine. I am not this body, I am not this prana, I am not this mind, I am not the senses, identify themselves with the all-pervading immortal pure Brahma and attain knowledge of Brahma and attain immortality. Rise above sense life and live in the Atman. You will attain immortality and eternal bliss. You will become immortal while living in this body if you attain knowledge of Brahma. You need not wait till you leave this body. Just as water in a cup borrows this heat from the sun or the fire, so also the mind, prana and the senses borrow their light and power from the Atman. The ear hears through the light of the Atman, the tongue speaks through the power of the Atman, the mind thinks through the power of the Atman, and the prana performs its functions through the power of the Atman only. The mind and the organs are inert and non-intelligence. They appear to be intelligence through the light and power of the Atma. The ears, the eye, mind and prana exist for the use of the Atma, just as house exists for the use of the water. The director is Brahman or Atma. Brahman shines by his own light. By its light all this universe is illumined. The sun, moon, stars, fire and lightning shine by its light. No one can live and breathe if there are not the self-luminous Brahman. Brahman leads prana up and apana down. One becomes immortal by renouncing all desires. Intuitive realization of truth. The Shruti says, not by words, not by offerings, not by wealth, but by renunciation alone does only tiny mortality. How can the eye see the sun 
the seer of sight. The eye is an object of perception for the mind and Atman. One cannot jump on one's own shoulders. Brahman cannot be an object of perception because it is partless, attributeless, extremely subtle and infinite. To define Brahman is to deny Brahman. Satchidananda is only a provisional, de provisional definition of Brahman. The Sutis explain Brahman through the Neti Neti, not this, not this doctrine. The disciple should possess a subtle, sharp, pure and unpointed intellect. Brahman cannot be known like the objects of the world. It cannot be explained by mere words, just as you explain to others the nature of the objects of the world. Brahman is distinct from the known, from the whole manifested universe and from the unknown too. Brahman is the only reality, he is the basis and source for everything. Brahman is not an object, it is all pervading, mysterious, incomprehensible, Chaitanya or pure, pure consciousness. Brahman must be known through intuition. It is very difficult to understand the nature of Brahman, it is very difficult to explain the nature of Brahman because there is no means or language by which to do so. Those who are endowed with a pure and subtle intellect can easily grasp the subtle ideas of the Upanishads. As Brahman is beyond the reach of the senses and the mind, the aspirant should at first have a comprehensive understanding of Brahman through the study of the Upanishads and the instructions of an illumined preceptor. The aspirant should keep himself with the four means and practice constant meditation. Then alone will he attain knowledge of Brahman. He will realize Brahman like the amlaka fruit in the hand. Then all doubts and delusions will vanish. That which is distinct from the known and the unknown is Brahman. The knowledge of Brahman has been traditionally handed down from preceptor to disciple. Gauda Pada taught Brahma Vidya to Govinda Pada, Govinda Bada to Shankara, Shankara to Padma Bada and others and so on. Brahman can be known only by instruction from the illumined teacher or realized sage, and not by logical discussions of intelligence, great expositions, austerity or sacrificial rites. The soul of man is the Atman. The soul of the universe is Brahman. The Atman is identical with Brahman. What speech does not enlighten, but what enlightened speech know that alone to be Brahman. Speech cannot reveal or illumine Brahman. Brahman is beyond the range of speech. Speech exposes itself through the power or light of Brahman. Speech is finite. How can the finite speech reveal the infinite Brahman? Brahman alone illumines speech and its organ. The Vak Indriya. Brahman is the speech of speech, the tongue of tongue. Brahman is within speech and direct speech. This Atma is Brahman or Bhuma, infinite or the unconditioned. Brahman is unsurpassable, big, great, the highest of all, all pervading. So it is called Brahman. Brahman is eternal, unchangeable, self-luminous, formless, colorless, attributeless, timeless, spaceless, indivisible, unborn, undecaying, immortal. Vedanta is not hostile to devotion, it only deprecates worship with selfish interest. A Vedanta or a sage is a perfect devotee. Her bhakti or supreme devotion and jnana or wisdom are one. Vedanta says that Ishwar, whom people worship, is one's own self. He teaches an expanded form of bhakti, the highest form of devotion, the self and the mind. Brahman is the silent witness of the activities of the mind and all the organs. That which cannot be comprehended by the mind, but what causes the mind to think and to apprehend the object, know that alone as Brahman. The mind is connected with all the organs, he is the commander-in-chief, 
of all active forces desire volition deliberation faith negligence courage timidity shame intelligence fear all these are ultimately the mind mind is the brick of brick of the seer the objects of the drishya are the seen the atman is the seer the mind is the seen the senses carry the impressions of objects to the mind the mind presents them to the atman the atman returns them to the mind then alone does the comprehension of objects become perfect and complete what cannot be seen by the eyes but by which the eyes are able to see god that alone as brahma brahman cannot be seen by the eyes as it is not an object of perception the eye is a finite instrument that carries the impression of objects color shape form size in the, to the mind the eye derives its power of seeing from brahman only its source the eye is made to move towards the objects by the enlightening intelligence of brahman brahman is a real unseen seer of sight is a silent witness of the activities of the eye brahman is a lord or the proprietor of this mind factory the eye is the ears or ordinary clocks ah uh, the mind is a head clock the intellect is the managing director what cannot be heard by the ears but by the ears are able to hear know that alone as brahman brahman directs the ears towards sound the ear is a finite instrument it carries the impressions of sound to the mind the activity of the ear is connected to the activity of the mind the ear derives its power of hearing from brahman only its source the ear is made to move towards sound music etc by the enlightening intelligence of brahman brahman is a real unheard hearer he is a silent witness of the activity of the ear what smell does not perceive but directs smell to be these objects know that alone as brahman that which one breathes not with the breath but by which breath is breathed know that alone as brahman that which is not the only one with prana but which what gives prana the power of enlivening all those beings know that alone as brahman brahman is not an object of perception knowledge of brahman is intuitive self awareness the prana is made to move towards the objects by the enlightening intelligence of brahman now truth is transcendental there is no objective and subjective consciousness for the sage subject and object are the same for him he sees only brahman everywhere the self or soul of everyone is brahman Brahman cannot be made the object of the knowledge of Parada because desires is none that those exist. Brahman is different from what is known, is also beyond what is not known. He who is endowed with the four means and who is pure and intelligent can understand the teachings of the Upanishads. Brahman is always the silent witnessing consciousness. He is the subject knower and seer the seer can never be seen the knower can never be known by the intellect anything perceived by the senses and conceived in the mind cannot be brahman only an object of the world can be perceived by the senses and thought by the mind brahman is unknown by the mind intellect and senses brahman is certainly knowable through direct intuitive perception in samadhi as the self or atman by the pure mind which is brahman itself till you attain the highest nirvikal state wherein you will feel that all indeed is brahman there is nothing but the self you will have to practice a gain and a gain inquiry reflection and meditation you must feel the presence 
in all names and forms. You cannot know Brahman just as you know an object. Brahman is known or realized not as an object but as pure self-consciousness through intuitive or direct inner experience or illumination. Subject and object are one in spiritual experience. Brahman is the witness of the waking, dreaming and deep sleep states. Brahman is intelligence in its essence, is a homogeneous mass of pure consciousness. Brahman is deathless, deathless, decayless, eternal, pure, unconditioned. One without a second is the self or Atma of all beings. In Nirvikal Samadhi, when all mental modifications merge in Brahman, there is no witness. Brahman is eternal, pure, self-luminous, undecaying in the existence absolute, knowledge absolute and this absolute. The knower of Brahman possesses tremendous spiritual strength. This Atman cannot be attained by one destitute of strength. Real strength comes only through knowledge of the Self. The knower of Brahman becomes absolutely fearless. This Atman is invulnerable and invincible. Immortality is the very nature of Brahman, just as heat is the very nature of fire. Nirvikal Samadhi is a sublime, soul-stirring experience that cannot be either imagined or described in words. You will have to experience it yourself in Samadhi, with the mind, intellect and senses is functioning. Brahma Gyan destroys ignorance just as light destroys darkness and reveals one inherent immortal nature. Ignorance is the root cause of all human suffering. If one does not know Brahma, he is caught in the round of buffs and dust. Really thirsty aspirants abandon the erroneous notion of I and mine and turn away with disgust from the world as everything here is perishable, illusory and transitory. They practice meditation on the Atman and behold the one essence of the Atman in all objects. They realize the oneness of the Self or the unity of the Atman in all and become immortal. They become Brahman. He who knows the highest Brahman becomes Brahman itself. He who lives in Brahman he who has realized the Atman really leads the true life. Mundane life or sense life is untruth, it is illusory. The knower of Brahman attains liberation by living Jivan Mukti. As soon as ignorance, which is the cause of bondage, is dispelled by the attainment of knowledge of Brahman, one gets liberation at once. Moral of the inner war. There is a real war inside between the good tendencies and the evil tendencies, between sattva and rajas and tamas, between the lower impure mind and the higher pure mind. The senses, the mind and the prana begin to fight. We hold together and support the body. Prana gains the victory. Prana too is the nut. The source for the prana is Brahman. The senses, the mind and the prana derive their light and power from Brahman only. Upanishads means knowing of Brahman, of secret doctrine. Disciples sit devotedly around the preservator for instruction, Upa nearly, Upa nearby, me devotedly, and Shad, and Sad sits. Upanishad means 
the text that that teaches of Brahman. Austerity, self-control, and sacrifice are aids to the acquisition of the knowledge of Brahman. Knowledge dawns in men by the destruction of evil actions. Knowledge of Brahman arises in those persons who have purified their minds by austerity, self-restraint, and works either in this birth or in several previous births. Those who have not removed the impurities of the mind either disbelieve or misbelieve Brahman when it is explained as in the case of Arochana. Those secrets explained become illumined to that great soul whose devotion to the Lord is great and whose devotion to the preserver is as great as that of the Lord. Knowledge of Brahman has a firm basis only in those persons who are self restrained and who do tapas. Truth is the abode of Brahma Vidya or spiritual knowledge. Austerity, self restrained or its support. The Vedas are the limbs. Truth is freedom from conceit, from fraud of speech, mind or deed. Knowledge of Brahman will arise only in a person who is free from conceit and fraud in speech, mind and deed, and who is good natured. Knowledge of Brahman does not arise in a person who is deceptive and utters falsehood. Therefore, it is said, the truth is a board of, a board or resting place of knowledge. Truth excels others as an aid to knowledge.